welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review slash overview on these two workbenches. And after the review, I'm going to show you how to put them together. So if you're looking for how to build this unit, that'll be after the review. All right. So if you look at the title, you'll see these actually are two different, technically, workbenches. The first one is the Harbor Freight Yukon multi-purpose workbench with LED light. It goes for around $130 at the store. This next one is the Wen brand workstation with light. You can buy it on Amazon for around $150. If you're a Prime member, obviously that includes free shipping. So right away, if you look at them, they look pretty much identical. The only difference that you see visually right away is the one on the left is just fairly taller. And I'm going to tell you that right off the rip, I can tell these are identical. They're made by the same place and they're just rebranded by two different companies. Now, in my experience, after putting both of these together, the one from Harbor Freight seems to be an updated model of this one. So the assembly video that I'm going to be doing in a little bit is the Wen brand one, the Harbor Freight one. It goes together the exact same way. There's just a few little things that make it a better process. So we'll go ahead and cover those first. So the overall build these are sturdy for the price you pay. I mean, we're talking about $150 or less. So they're not going to be, you know, exactly, uh, you know, like the thousand dollar and up type workbench. They are pretty tough. You gotta understand that these tops are made out of like a, it's a fiberboard type of material. So if you're gonna be doing any kind of like heavy duty uh, work on like large heavy parts, you'd probably wanna reinforce this with another additional top on top of it. The metal is pretty thin gauge, but once it's all bolted together, it actually becomes a pretty strong unit. So the weight rating is 220 pounds on the top, 220 pounds, or I should say 200 pounds on the bottom shelf. And each drawer can hold about 25 pounds. And then they say the top shelf is 44 pounds. And that goes for both of them. So they do have identical specifications. The one thing that I did right away is I painted the pegboard black. I just used a quick coat of spray paint on both of them because they come just the pegboard color. And it definitely looks a lot cleaner if you spray them black real quick. So the big difference between the two when it comes to assembly is on the Wen brand. Like I said, this could just be a revision. The drawers came in a bunch of pieces and I had to bolt them together completely. The bottoms of the drawers is just like this hard pressed board stuff. The Harbor Freight ones did come fully assembled. They were a welded drawer. Um, same type of material on the bottom though. Uh, they do actually have like kind of a soft close when you close them. Kind of that last little bit there. I've seen in the reviews, some people saying that the drawers were just falling out. Like, these are not going to just fall out if you build it correctly. Most likely those people assembled it wrong and uh, you know, something's crooked and that's what's causing the tracks not to stay. They do both have built-in power strips. You can choose which side you want this on. As you can see, it's just three outlets not really a surge protector or anything, just like a power strip. You can put it on either side, like I did here. Harbor Freight one, it's on that side. It does appear that the, the Yukon brand from Harbor Freight has a better LED light. You can see it's got a black housing and it goes all the way across underneath. Whereas the Wen brand, it's about half the size of the counter. So what it appears to me is that that would have been like the first revision of this. And then they took everything that was wrong with that one 
And the, the, the list of things that I don't like is it had separate washers and nuts to go onto the bolts, whereas the Harbor Freight had kind of a flanged nut, it made installation a lot quicker and easier. Obviously the drawers is the big thing. These were already pre-assembled. It made it, uh, it go together a lot quicker. It seems to have a better light. Uh, also you'll notice on the top of the Harbor Freight, there's extra uh, screws that hold it down in the top, four extra screws, whereas across the middle of this one, there's no screws in the front or back. And it still feels very solid, but this just gives this a whole nother level. It's not really shaking, it's just not on level ground right here. But yeah, that gives the Harbor Freight just a little bit more rigidity to the unit. Both of them do feel very rigid though. Again, you have to remember what we're talking about here. We didn't spend very much money at all to buy both of these. So I've got under $300 for this very large amount, eight feet of workspace. Plus you have a lot of nice storage for your workshop on the top and the bottom. Plan is to put some cabinets up. I'm not sure exactly the arrangement they're gonna have these on. But again, not gonna be able to put a lot of heavy stuff, a lot of heavy tools in here. You could reinforce this drawer with some metal, or maybe a different type of wood, um, you know, make the drawers a little bit stronger. But this is not meant to be a tool chest. This is just a simple workbench. So as long as your expectations are in line with the price that you pay, it is actually a little better than I would thought it'd be, to tell you the truth. And I was hesitant to buy it until I went into a Harbor Freight store and actually got to uh, put my hands on one and check it out for myself. And I saw that it was actually pretty nice. So I picked the one up from Harbor Freight. I decided I wanted another one and I could not get them. That was, I got the last one at the last store around me that had any at all. And then if I went to order one online, once I got done paying for shipping and taxes, it ended up being a lot more than the one from Amazon. So I ordered the one from Amazon, $150 with free prime shipping. It got to me in a couple days. Again, I'm happy with it. it. Just seems to be like a prior revision of this one. So I probably would have liked to have the two, especially since when they're standing right next to each other, you can see there's just a little bit of a height difference. Not a big deal though. All right, so that's my overall review. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and give it five stars for what it is, just because for the price I paid, I think these are gonna work real well. The installation instructions for both are basically the exact same thing. I will walk you through step-by-step step how to build it. So if you have one and you're looking for that, that starts right now. So here's the manual for both products. You can see if you flip through them, the specifications are the same. Honestly, it's like they were even kind of printed on the same paper. But two different companies, obviously. All right, so for this build, I'm just gonna be using a basic set of quarter inch sockets and optional. I've got uh, my impact driver and a drill here with a felt bit on it. That's optional. It'll just take a little bit longer if you do everything by hand. If you will need a Phillips head screwdriver and some metric bits. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assemble the leg structure here. Now, both these manuals, surprisingly, all the parts are labeled the same. Everything is identical. The manual for the Harbor Freight one seems to be a little bit better, kind of show things a little bit better but nonetheless, it's the same procedure. Basically, we're gonna put the plastic little feet on the steel legs, and we're gonna nut and bolt everything together. It's very simple. The hardware is just a series of a Phillips head screw bolt and nuts, and there is some washers. 
All right, so we're gonna get started by assembling the legs. Then we're gonna kind of put the top together and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so, so far the difference that I've seen between the Harbor Freight and the Wen one is uh, this one, this Wen one had these slightly, they're 10 millimeter nuts, but they have a separate washer that goes on. And the Harbor Freight one had more of a flanged nut, so they eliminated the washers. But everything is the same, so we're gonna take the number four piece, this is the side piece, and we'll lay it between two of these number one pieces. Um, these little plastic feet, if they're not on there, you put that on there. So this one's number one, this one's number two, and then we're going to connect them with a number four piece, like this. So basically, it's real simple. Let's take one of these bolts that has the Phillips head on it, stick it through the hole. A washer. And then a nut. And you want to make sure that you don't tighten everything down completely at first. Just finger tight. So there'll be two on that side, two on this side. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side of the table legs. We're going to put those four bolts and nuts on. So I should mention real quick, there are different size bolts. Um, there's an M6, it says by 10. It's the shorter of the bolts that we're using for this part right here. Later on, there's these longer bolts that'll get used. It says these M5 by 25. Just set those aside for now. Most of what we're doing is gonna use these. And you can see there's another set, M6 by 16. Those again will be used later. So we're starting off with the shorter version. So, you'll see, as you're putting the side together, there's a little lip that needs to be at the top. So you can see there's holes. Obviously, the shelf will bolt down to that later. Okay, so um, the next step after you get the two sides together, there's these number five and number six panels. You want to take the number fives, which is your front and rear cross piece. Basically, what we're going to do is put it on the inside of the frame. And same thing, same nuts and bolts, two on the front, on each side, two on the back. We're going to bolt these panels in place. Okay, so once we've got the bottom secured, we'll get time to attach some upper side parts. Uh, you see the one side includes a built-in power strip. Uh, the WEN one had the power strip installed onto it. The Harbor Freight one, I had to screw that together. Not a big deal either way. You just need to decide which side you want this on. So the back is identified. It's the number two pieces. They're higher than the front ones. In my case, I want the power strip on the left side. So I'll be installing this one over in here, and then the other piece, obviously there's no power strip, we'll install that one on the other side. Okay, so to decide which holes you wanna use, on the front post, you're gonna use the top two holes, and on the second post, you're gonna use the second set of holes. Let's say you know where you wanna put it. And you always wanna go from the outside in for the most part, that way there's no, nothing to get caught on on the outside of the workbench. Okay, so the next pieces we're gonna use are number six. They're the same for the front and the back. And basically, this will go on the top set of holes in the front. Same thing, two bolts and nuts and washers each side. And then on the back, 
same thing. One of them does say have branding on it. You can put that on the back if you don't want to see it. It doesn't matter. Okay, so after you got the top, remember everything's loose right now. On, we're going to take this piece, it's 7B, and it's going to go on the outside of the back, and you'll line up the holes, and then it will stick above, so this little slotted hole sticks up above the frame. And again, we'll put the bolts into the back, washer, and nut. Now on the front, it's slightly different. On the front one, we're going to take it, it's 7F, just the part, and we're going to put it on the inside. And it's just going to hang down like that, and that's what's going to hold the drawers in place. Okay, so next we have, this is our inside uh, pre-assembled uh, tracks for the drawers. So you can see there's two holes in the front, and this is piece number eight. There's two holes in the back. Pretty self-explanatory on this one. We're just going to kind of lay it on top of the bolt holes and then we're going to hold it in place. So the same thing, the exposed part is the bolt comes up through the bottom and then the washer and nut go down from the top. Okay, so next, this is piece 9R, and there's also gonna be the matching 9L. This is your side tracks, so 9R is for the right side. So obviously, with the part of the drawer track facing forward, we're going to bolt it in place here. And it's the same thing, two in the front, two in the back. And we're gonna do the same thing on both sides. All right, so here's where bonus points to the Harbor Freight one. The drawers on the Harbor Freight one came pre-assembled. Here on this WEN one, we have to assemble the drawers together completely. So you take a 10L and a 10R, that's your left and right part of the drawer. The front is a 12, 11, excuse me. So this is the front of the drawer, an 11. In the back, 12, and then same thing, it's just we're bolting basically a box together, just like everything else we've done. And then there's the little uh, fiberboard inserts that are at the bottom of the drawers that just lay down on top of them. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these. Okay, so to tighten it up, I'm using a Phillips head and this 10 millimeter socket. All right, so for the handle, it's just four screws, washers and nuts, and then just Bolts right in the front of there like that. Okay, you can be careful when you're putting them in with this is loose, because the drawer will fall out if you kind of like push the table sideways. The only reason we're doing this is we want to make sure everything's nice and square when we tighten it all down. So you can kind of tell that because the drawers will be in place. So make sure both sides are engaged. And you'll be able to tell they're engaged because this will be flush here. 
and there and there. And now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down um, all the perimeter uh, nuts and bolts that we were just working on. And the best way to do that I found is, it's a Phillips head, but it's got a really large end on it. It's a little bigger than our regular number two Phillips. That seems to work the best. And then just like I said, a 10 millimeter socket. Just work your way around. Make sure you don't forget any, get them all. Make sure everything stays straight as you go around and tighten these all up. Okay, so next, now that we've got this all tightened up, it actually sturdies up pretty nice. So as you're building it, you're like, man, this is pretty chintzy. But it really starts to sturdy up once you get everything bolted together. So this is gonna go on the inside of here like this. And right now, we're just going to bolt the sides. We're not gonna bolt the back because we have to bolt the uh, pegboard and stuff on here in a little bit. So we're just gonna take a couple uh, nuts and bolts, stick them through on the two holes on both sides. Again, 15L is for the left, 15R is for the right. It's pretty obvious, but you want to make sure that these holes, the two at the top and one in the middle here, face the back. Okay, so this piece here says 16B on it. This is the back upper post. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick it on the inside of the metal here. And we're gonna put a bolt from the back through the front, just on the upper hole on each side for right now. The bottom hole we will fill later when we put on the pegboard. So again, we're just gonna put a bolt through the top hole for now. And then obviously a washer and a nut on both sides. All right, so next you have 17L and 17R. It's this little piece here. This little flange will be at the top. And we're going to put this on using two nuts and bolts on both sides. And we're going to bolt that into position at the top. All right, so we're just finger tightening these. You want it to basically look level, but we'll have to tighten it down once we get the top piece on. You'll see that in a second. So first we're gonna put the front on. So front is labeled 16F. And it's just pretty simple, obviously the flange at the top. It bolts on the inside here of the front. We'll put a nut and a bolt through like everywhere else. Okay, so you can see this is what it would look like when you get it like that. Looks like cardboard. It makes a huge difference. You just take a minute, put a little bit of like a matte finish black paint on the board. It really makes it look much better. We'll set this in place here before we start tightening this stuff down. So kind of tell us where we need to put all of our different bolts to get everything aligned. And we're going to use a different set of nuts and bolts than we have been using. All right, this is where our M6 by 16 nuts and bolts will come in. They're just a little bit longer to account for the thickness of the board, but it's not really that big of a deal. Again, we're gonna come through the back. These two holes here, there's a hole here, there's a hole up on the top, and there's a series of holes that go all the way across the top, and then there is one right here in the middle that we're gonna put a bolt in. Same thing on the other side, go up the side, 
across the top. That will kind of straighten out your back. Once that's done, we'll be adding the shelf on the different levels and then tightening that up. Alright, so now that we get everything kind of in place, I'm just going to tighten up these perimeter nuts and bolts that are holding the pegboard on and then make sure everything looks square while you're tightening it down. You can get a level if you want. Okay, so once we get these tightened down, I'm gonna wait, do the top one once we get the shelf put on, which we'll go ahead and do now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the top in place. Everything's tight underneath the top, so don't have to worry about that. So like the top and the bottom on the WEN model are the same thing. So there's one thing I noticed different. The Harbor Freight one, the top is a little different because it has a few extra connection points. Okay, so I just was able to kind of like pull and then push that top into place. Got everything squared up, it's nice and tight now, which is good. Uh, next, we're gonna take these, they're like M5 by 25, these uh, screws, nuts, and washers. And these are what hold down like the tabletop. They sit flush when they're installed. Just go in like that. And you reach up from underneath with the washer and the nut. Screw them down. So there's four that hold the top on, four that hold the shelf below, and then eight of them up top to screw it on. Get it in. All right, so now that we've got the top down there, secured. We're gonna go ahead and lay pretty much the last piece on. It's the top that goes on here. There's only one piece that really even fits, so there shouldn't be any kind of uh, question as to what fits where. Just notice that the way the holes line up will line up with the holes on the top of here. There's a couple little threaded connections here. Looks like it's probably for the light. So this will just sit up here. And same thing, we're gonna use the uh, longer bolts, the washer and the nut, just like we used for the top of the table on these holes right here. Make sure everything lines up. If something doesn't line up, you may just have to adjust some of these screws on the sides to get it so it will line up. Let's go to these two little brackets here. And I'll give you a couple Phillips screws. We're just gonna put the screw through the bracket. And like I said, there's a little threaded Picture itself. Probably want to put it so the switch is facing forward. They give you a hole on either side that you can run it down. Harbor Freight one has a 
black housing on the light. This one is white. They plug it into the power port on the side of the unit, however you want to do it. That's basically it for putting them together. So basically identical. All right, well, hopefully this video was helpful, whether you're just looking for a review or a how-to assembled video. Again, the two units are basically the exact same thing. We already covered that. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them below. There'll be a link in the description to where you can buy both of these units. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Subscribe for more. And until next time, we'll see you later.